All right, so I just wanna briefly talk about um, generative AI, just a little bit of a reminder about how it works and then how you can use it for problem solving and troubleshooting when you have tech problems. So um, to start with, remember AI is looking at words that commonly go together because it's trying to find the next most common word with some randomness and other details. So for example, if you had Mary had a blank, most people would say little lamb because that's a phrase, words that it saw you see together a lot. ChatGPT would do the same thing. When it was trained, it saw Mary had a little lamb together all the time. And so it's going to put those words together. But let's say I did Josh had a, there could be all kinds of different things that go in there because that's not like a common phrase people put in, right? Um, another example, I, I put in Lincoln was born in and I asked for the five most likely words that would come after it. So born in Kentucky, 1809, February, log cabin, a humble family. So most likely these are probably correct because these, these were facts that was in his data over and over and over again. Anything written about Lincoln, it would say Lincoln was born in Kentucky, Lincoln, Lincoln was born in February, etc. So that's how it knows something is because it saw those words together a lot. It doesn't know them because it knows that it's a fact. It just knows that those words went together a lot. But if I ask it, Melissa War was born in, this is what I get. None of these are true, right? But it's thinking about what's the most common things. Well, born in California, there's a lot of people born in California. So that's probably why it pulled that up or New York or Houston. And there's some randomness. So um, when we are using AI, when something really matters, like the factual nature of it really matters. If it's general knowledge, it's usually okay, but always good to check. Um, but the cool thing about it is if you're using it for something like coding or troubleshooting, the truth doesn't matter quite as much. And let me show you why. So if I'm trying to solve a problem, and I'm gonna do this on Copilot and turn off my camera for a minute. Um, Copilot, if you're at NMSU, you get, you get it and it's like GPT-4. So I'm on the more creative. It does a little more than GPT-4 because it actually pulls from the internet. Whereas if you're using GPT, for example, chat GPT 3.5 or 4, um, if it's 4, you have to ask it to go to the internet to look something up for you. 3.5 will not do that, okay? That's important to remember is whether the LLM you're using is actually gonna go look something up or not. Usually it doesn't because it's just pulling from the next most likely word, okay? But you can see in Copilot in another tool called perplexity.ai, it does go to the internet, all right? So that makes it a little more useful in that way. Still can make, um, still can make mistakes, but you know. So let's say that the other day I was trying to make my home canvas page um, more creative and more interactive. So I'm gonna tell it, you are a creative and innovative teacher who loves to do fun things with students. <laughs> I want to make my home canvas page more interactive, S something that students can share pictures on and everyone can see it within Canvas. How could I do this? Right now, if I wanted to, I could just say I want to make it more interactive and act it for, ask it for ideas. But this time, I just want to show you more specific to troubleshooting and, and solving technological problems. Um, so it's going to give this thing about how it's a fantastic way and how smart I am and how smart it is. So it's going to tell me to do content, page content, image sharing, assignment with file uploads. OK, and then embed them. I can embed them. That's not exactly what I'm looking at. Oh, here's some other ideas. Okay. I want something that will automatically add student content to my home page. How could I do that? Let's see if it gets it. The last time I did this, it, it uh, gave me a really good idea. So, and then they'll give you video and they'll give you sources. And that's what's nice about like Copilot is it'll give you sources and such. Oh, RSS, that's an idea. Okay, so it's giving me another thing, RSS feed. All right, so I could try that. And if I was confused about something, I could ask it for other tips about what it, I could do. 
All right. Um, and one thing that is good to do is ask for multiple ideas. So um, what are five other ways I could do it? And sometimes when you ask for multiple, you'll get a better, because it won't just be the most common, It'll you'll get some different options. Five different ways, interactive quizzes, um, Google Firm, Server, SurveyMonkey, ooh, Canva, it's gonna tell me more in Canva. Interactive presentations, Prezi or slides, infographics, um, interactive worksheets, templates and visuals. Ah, so this is this conclude interactive timeline maps or image galleries that update automatically. How would I do number five? And it'll it'll kind of give me some ideas. So the good thing about this is that if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, right? It's not high stakes, and I can try something. And if it works out, then it doesn't matter if this is exactly true or not. It can be helpful. The same thing when you're coding with AI. Um, because you take a code it gives you and you run it, you can see immediately whether it's going to work or not. doesn't mean it's the most high quality code, but I feel more comfortable coding with AI because I can always check, um, check that work and I'll know immediately if it doesn't work. So you see um, it's Canva. This is actually basically what I ended up doing. And it takes you through step by step. And if you get stuck, you tell it where you're stuck, etc. Okay, one more example. I'm going to start a new topic and I'm going to, I don't know what it's going to say here. Um, we're doing a video discussion on Canvas in my online class, but my computer is old and it isn't doing video and it, it doesn't have enough space to store videos. How could I still participate? How could I still post a video? I don't know what it's going to say. We'll see. Um, again, I might have asked what are five ways for posting a video, and it would probably tell me. Um, so there we go. Regular Canvas upload, submitting a link, Dropbox, YouTube, Google Docs. Media has a feature that allows you to record video directly through the Media tab, right? Um, you can use Canvas Studio, um, and they'll give you sources and things to try. Now you might try one and say, none of those work. Any other ideas, right? And um, you may or may not get a good answer, but I find that generally these types of questions work really well. And it's a lot easier than the old way of having to go search for tutorials online it kind of gives it to you right here. So here's some more ideas of mobile upload. There you go, do it on your phone. External hosting, um, cloud storage. Okay, so I just wanna encourage you when you want to figure out how to do something, even if you don't know if it's possible or not, have a conversation with an AI and see if it can help you figure out a way to do it. It's a great use of it because it's not dependent on whether or not something's true. All right, okay, good luck.